Thanks for tuning in again. This is Splatterhead. This is Fitz. And Tom. And Tom. We got Tom. On. We, got a, we got another microphone for Tom. Our, our duo has turned into a trio, and for good reason, and you will see why as we progress. So uh, if you're new to the yeah, show. I have to remember to hold them because I don't have a stand. Right. <laughs> Ba- baby steps. We yeah. were baby steps. So if you're new to the show, this is the Fan Club Blitz, and uh, we like to talk about football, talk about the Raiders especially. We like to reach out and uh, interview other booster clubs and fan clubs and black hole chapters and uh, primarily Raiders because that's what we really care about, but we like to talk to other teams too. You know, you're going to hear uh, not just Raider clubs on this show, but you're going to hear clubs from uh, other teams, especially rivals. We love rivals. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yes. and not not only that. I mean, you're also you're going to hear about music. You're going to hear about booze, food. I don't know, making muffins, crepes, We're fishing. Gonna- <laughs> uh, 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 not, there's nothing off limits with us, and it just just buckle in. We're going to teach you how to uh, come to New Jersey or New York and just fit right in because you're going to learn how to order food and drinks and and act like a local. Yeah. There's none of that whiz wit crap here. No. <laughs> yeah. Think it as think of it as one giant life lesson for you all. That's right, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. They'll enjoy it. And if they don't, well, they can listen to something else. That's right. Yeah. We'll just get somebody else that will enjoy it. We have like three other friends. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, what we got lined up for today? Well, I do believe that we we're going to be speaking with somebody from the Raider Fan Club or Booster Club, whatever you want to call it. In Kansas City. That's right. That's how we're going to follow up last week's episode. We went into uh, one of this place that was like uh, it's like a really kind of goofy looking McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, like I like I said last week, it was like some kind of like mental patient went in there with like multiple bottles of ketchup and mustard and just started spraying them all over the walls. Right. So what better way to follow that up than to talk to uh, the Raiders fans in Kansas City? Yeah, it's it's almost like like. Last week we had like really like a drink of really cheap booze, and now we have better booze to wash the taste out. I don't know if it was cheap booze. I think they charge a lot of money for all that fancy stuff. But the Chiefs guy was really nice and bought most of our beers. Yes, he was. Yes, that was very nice of him. Oh, because yeah, no, I don't yes. think I would actually spend money on a toasted marshmallow lager. No, no, <laughs> my uh, my cucumber, uh, my cucumber saison was. Uh, was refreshing, but uh, whatever they were charging for it, it's not. It's not on my menu. Right at, at, at this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna say we cease talking about toasted marshmallow and cucumber beers. You know, refer back to our podcast episode I think two ago where we discussed beer, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. Yeah, get yourself a Budweiser and shut up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, it's actually a special day today. I mean, obviously, you know, when you people hear this, we've already recorded this. Uh, but today, at our home base at the Irish Cottage, today is their 11th birthday party. 11 years ago today, this wonderful establishment opened up. That's right. And it's been the black hole of New Jersey for the last uh, two and a half years. Yes. And it's actually funny because uh, 11 years ago today, I was here. I uh, was filling in with the uh, Morris County Pipe Band because they needed members to play for the grand opening. So I got a last minute call to come. And uh, later on that evening, uh, I was in the bar. With my son, who you'll see uh, on our website, he's the big kid, the, the big one. But 11 years ago, he, I was walking around the bar, the Irish cottage with him on my shoulders. And most likely, depending on how uh, the birthday celebrations go tonight, there's a good chance that he will be carrying me around. <laughs> <laughs> Turn about is fair play. That's right. Yeah, it should be a big, big party tonight. I think we got we got a few of the crew coming for that. Yeah, we have uh, Chris Potts is going to, you know, take a break from his constant worry worrying over the uh the raiders and maybe enjoy himself a little bit hopefully that's right hey speaking of the raiders we uh we got our first glimpse at chucky boy last night preseason game against the lions yeah uh i got some points on that and you know some things i took away from that game uh, if you want you know feel free to jump in on them one uh obviously there's the raider fans will find any excuse to pre-game or tailgate at home for a scrimmage because it's funny because my friends that are have other you know fans of other teams i mentioned hey you're gonna watch your your guys tonight and they're like watch them where they go scrimmage they're like they didn't even know i never watched a scrimmage in my life i didn't even know they were on well they're on but we don't really care we're we just it's another reason for us raider fans to open up a bottle of tequila 
and whatever else is in front of us and go forward. Absolutely. I watched, uh, I passed out with the TV on because <laughs> yes. I had a couple of those tequilas, a couple beers. But uh, I watched the uh, first first quarter, I think, and then I was <sighs> out on the couch. Yeah, I was, uh, I, like I said, we, we all know what it is. It's the first preseason game. It's more of a, it's an evaluation. Uh, I was I was happy to see Carr rolling out on passes. You know, I was very impressed with the one run that uh, Lynch ran off, and not because you know it was a touchdown, but it was called back. Whatever, blah 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 blah. I was impressed with the speed. I actually had to do a double take because I thought it was one, maybe one of the younger kids running because it was like old Marshawn running. Uh oh, Tom's looking at you. I know, he's got that Skittles, that Skittles look in his face. So that was his. <laughs> so that was his token run for the game. Then he retreated back to his. His bicycle on the sidelines, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, gotta, I, I, you gotta I, adhere to that sixty <laughs> yards a game, whether it comes in ten carries or one. Can't go over that. God forbid. You know. We're 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 fingers. That'll, cur- that'll that'll trigger some sort of weird bonus where he gets another ten million dollars. <laughs> We're fingers crossed that that is not going to be a factor this year. <laughs> yeah, Ra- Raider Nation is is often divided on beast mode. Yeah, like I said, I I don't mind the antics. Uh, you know, I love the craziness. I love the dry humor, the the crazy humor. I just um, uh, I just don't like the I'm done playing attitude that we get some time from him. I don't think we're going to see that this season. I really feel like he's bought in. I hope so. I hope so. And the other thing I did take away, and this is to go to all the, uh, and listen, I, it, it, there's, there's nothing's ever set in stone. I'm glad that Gruden's back. Like I said, we've had this argument over the, the past year. Why Gruden? Why Gruden? Like I always said, who else? You know, Bill Belichick wasn't available. So let's go forward. We're not going to pick up garbage. At least we know what we're getting here. And all the, the Gruden naysayers that he was out of the game so long. He didn't come in with, like, a single-wing offense from, like, the 1930s. Like, he actually knows modern football still. Crazy as it sounds, even though he's been involved with the sport since he stopped coaching. But we'll leave that aside. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about Chucky. I think he's one of the best uh, football minds out there, whether that, whether that translates to, uh, you know, how he coaches. But I, I have faith. I don't know, the, the clips that I've seen, it was vintage Gruden, um, game plan, was like you could tell he stepped it up, you know, from what he used to, you know. So. I was happy. I'm happy. I mean, we're not, we're not going to see much you know, until I the mean, season I, starts. I, you know, I've seen a couple of things on the Raiders website where they were harping on penalties. Well, they had eight penalties. Well, eight penalties in the first scrimmage game of the year. To me, that ain't so bad when you're getting 20 25 in a regular season game after you've already been playing for eight and nine weeks. So, hey, what, what did Al know. Davis say? You know, you try not to make mistakes. When you do, you don't worry about it it. as long as you win. Just win. Just win, baby. I don't care. Get all the penalties you want if you're going to win the game. That's right. Listen, penalties happen. It's part of the game. You know, like we were joking around about, you know, the the new offensive lineman last night. You know, that the Marshawn run called back because he was holding. Well, it happens. If Listen, if you're not holding, you're not trying. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. It's part of the game. It's just. It's, if sometimes you're you sometimes you get caught. Yeah, yep. that, that's the skill of an offense. A great offensive lineman, his best skill is that he hides the way he holds from the the refs. And that's it. Yeah, I I agree a hundred percent. Because they're they're these guys are beasts. They're, you're not stopping them with with your flat hands or your arms. You're you're holding them. Otherwise, you're getting run over. Yeah, I mean when I used to coach, uh, you know, eighth grade football, I had one of the coaches was yelling, and you know, you're holding. I'm like, listen, you're supposed to hold. Yes. You're not supposed to get caught. Exactly. All right, so be smart. <laughs> it's true. It's true, people. I, don't know. I was pleased with the defense, too. The, I think, to me, the biggest, more so than, than, than Chucky and, and uh, you, know, you know, getting the offense back on track, uh, which we know we can do. We have the talent there. I'm really, I, I'm going to say right now that I think that the, the MVP of this team is going to be Gunther because yeah. I think – you know, we finally have a defensive coordinator yeah. after all these that, years. The defense that was on the field last night in the first scrimmage, you could argue, was better than the defense in eight games last year. Easily. Yeah. You know, easily was better. Listen, our defense, you take Khalil out of the mix, and we have the worst defense possibly in the history of football last season. Yes. Which still amazes me, you know, you have a guy like Khalil that's getting double, triple teamed almost every play, but yet nobody else can step up and make a play. 
now there's only like now there's only like eight players on the field that you have to worry about. How how come nobody's making a play outside of Khalil? Well, I think that's going to change. I really do. Yeah. I I, th- I yeah. think uh, that that we've got a great defensive mind, great defensive coordinator out there, and. Look, it's, it's a matter of these guys now taking what he teaches and what he coaches and executing. And I still, I still think, I, well, I know, this whole Mac thing is going to work out. All you people out there, nobody's trading Khalil Mack. Stop it. It's all a game. It's all that's, a game. That's nonsense. And stop listening to this former GM. This guy knows he, he, has, he has no inside information, nothing. He's making crap up, and ESPN is eating it up and just plastering it out there for you saps to, like, chew on all week and argue about. Right. And so then, stop. And then Raider fans are running with it, too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, other podcasts and, and, and radio yeah. shows and stuff. Knock it off. Look, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He, he's not in the organization. He, he's talking to Mac, but nobody else is? Come on. Yeah, it, it, exactly. No, no clue what's going on. Yeah. Then all this nonsense, oh, the – you know, Raiders possibly will trade. No, the Oakland Raiders are not going to trade Khalil Mack to anybody. There is a less than a two percent chance that that happens. <laughs> yep. No, it's not happening. He's going to if they don't work out a deal right now, he's going to get franchise tagged, and we're going to move on. And Khalil Mack is going to be a Raider for life. That's it. This is this is all. It's all a ploy. And it's a, ESPN knows it. This is just listen. Nobody's talking about anything with the NFL right now, so now we're going to get them to talk about something with the NFL. And listen, until you know, next week, who knows? They might they might find like Tom Brady, like a picture of Tom Brady, like buying women's underpants. So the, the whole thing can change around to like now Tom Brady wears women's underwear, and like Cleo Mack will be a thing of the past. You heard it here first on the Fan Club Blitz. <laughs> Tom Brady wears women's underwear. If I had Tom Brady's wife, I would wear her underwear too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see where you're coming from, but the, the, the thought of that makes, On my makes head. me want to retreat. Okay, all right, that's bad. Thank you. That, that's a better visual then. All right. <laughs> this, l- ladies and gentlemen, this is why we got that third microphone in here. Do we have ladies and gentlemen listening to this show? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm just trying to be polite at this point. Speaking of polite, man, you know, the, uh, it was weird that uh, that that. KC Chiefs interview, you know, I listened back a couple of times now. And, you know, even though they tried to, you know, kind of throw some digs in there, Midwesterners, uh, they're very polite about it, you know, just so nice. Yeah, they're, they're like they're that group of people that would be like, hey, you know what, go F yourself and have a great day. Yeah, well, that's kind of how this conversation started with me and that guy, Josh. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was I, I, I did enjoy myself. It was, it, no matter how disturbing it was being in that, that McDonald's type bar it was it was i i did enjoy myself yeah probably should have gotten some kind of food while i was there yeah but you know what and for the people that aren't from this area the best part about that is you know the the queens i don't know probably on paper from where we're at is maybe i don't know like 60 miles right around there it only took us about 18 hours to get there yeah yeah, is, that's about right for New Jersey. You know? There was something on the road there that they had had us take a detour. I figured, you know, five hours later it yeah. should be opened up, but nope, <laughs> no. still closed. Still closed. Yeah, we were actually thought we were going to get there just in time for like opening kickoff of the season. Right. Well, I'm done talking to uh, talking about Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, yeah. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we move this thing along and talk to uh, some Raider fans in Kansas City? That sounds like right. fun. Sounds that's good. A, yeah, absolutely. All right, so we got Eddie from Kansas City on the line. Que pasa, Eddie? What's happening? What's going on? What's going on? Not much, man. So uh, you a uh, Kansas City native, or did you move there? or what's, what's Yeah, you? born and raised Kansas City. Um, like I said, luckily within the Sprayer Nation, I had a couple older cousins that kind of, you know, got me into it. The rest of my family is all Chiefs fans. Uh, so we're kind of those, you know, three rebels in the family. And like I said, it's, it's that right away, you know? Yeah, that's it, man. So, uh, and how long you been a Raider fan? Um, really, I mean, I'd say about 2000 or so is kind of when I first kind of really remember, you know, kind of getting into it before, you know, I was a kid and, you know, football was really kind of the last thing I was thinking of. Um, but like I said, once I kind of get, got into the sport and really, you know, like I said, fell in love with, fell in love with the team. Right on. And you're part of a, uh, you guys have a booster club out there or a fan club? Or- yeah. Yeah, it's that. a booster club. Um, we started about 2015, 
uh, it originally kind of started back oh one oh two. There was a group of guys that got together uh, with the NFL Sunday ticket and you know watched all the games and kind of called themselves the KC Raider Nation. So we stuck with that. Um, and really, like I said, 2015 was when uh, we started doing the Facebook group and stuff and kind of you know let it grow to, to citywide. And uh, I'd say we're probably about you know a good 50, 60 people for sure. Nice. That's got to be fun. What's it? What's it? What's the reaction like? What's it like for uh, you know? 50, 60 guys decked out in silver and black, like hanging out in Kansas City. Oh, it's it's awesome. There's no better feeling than the, those looks you get. You know, they they see that silver and black. I mean, anybody that's been to Arrowhead, they know that the Raider Nation shows up. I mean, there's it's you know, I'm just like with everywhere else, the Raider Nation shows up. But in Kansas City specifically, I mean, it's you know, it's a good 60, 40 Raiders Chiefs or Chiefs Raiders rather. Yeah, uh, out there. Nice. So there's there's no nice. better feeling than that. So hey, real quick, one thing I did want to throw. I listened to the episode from last week, and uh, we do not condone that cucumber beer that you guys were drinking on out there at that cheap spot. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. We 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 don't condone it either. It's you know. We, we, sometimes we just get away so from I, ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, they, they were. He was buying, so I, I, that's nothing I would ever spend money on. But it was, I, you know, I said, "Hey, what do Chiefs fans drink?" You know, and I'm like, "Toasted almond, cucumber." What? <laughs> well, first of all, I want to give you kudos on not going around football season dressed like like a condiment counter at McDonald's. For one, you, you pick great colors to wear. Two, uh, just just out of curiosity, I mean, you know, you said you and your cousins are, are Raider fans and a family of Chiefs fans. Like, what's that got to be like? Like around the holidays? I mean, that's got to go over like a fart in church or something. There was that commercial uh, that it was an uh, NFL shop did where there's a family of Chiefs fans. I guess it's there with this Raider Raider sweater on with the Christmas lights. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It yeah, basically feels just like that. It's- <laughs> <laughs> That was that was the best commercial from last year, yeah. I think. Love that one. Yeah, I did like that. That was a good that was commercial. Awesome. So now you, you said you listened to the episode from last week. I mean, is there anything you want to dispute about? You know, like what they were saying is the best barbecue at the stadium or near the stadium or in in the area or any, anything you would like I'd to say. Hand, yeah, hands down. I mean, Kansas City is the best barbecue, but again, I'm a Kansas City native, so you know, I got to favor it one way. Um, as far as restaurants go, I mean, you asked. You know, 20 people from Kansas City who has the best barbecue, they're all going to tell you 20 different places. Uh, so I kind of threw it out there to a bunch of people saying, you know, trying to get some feedback because I figured this question was coming. Um, I've heard a lot of Gates barbecue, Slaps barbecue, uh, Kansas City Joe's. Um, and like I said, there's, you know, a bunch of mom and pops ones out there, too. So basically anywhere you go to, you know, you're not really going to get you're not going to get anything bad for sure. Okay, That's fair. Yeah, that's fair, man. I now, mean, now uh, do you guys have like a like a bar restaurant you hang out at and watch the games or. So, yeah, we've kind of been moving uh, moved around a couple spots. Um, the first year we did uh, Top Golf. It's kind of towards the south of the city, which was a nice setup. Um, I guess they got a hold of like the Tampa Bay Raider Nation that's down there. And uh, they did something like that out there. So they hit us up, had us come in, which was cool. Um, last year, we moved to a spot a little bit closer to the middle of the city. Uh, the, the owner was actually a Giants fan. So he told me from the beginning, it's like, hey, if you guys bring more, pe- more people than the Chiefs fans do, you guys get the sound, you guys get the TV. And there was a couple times Chiefs fans left mad because they couldn't watch or listen to the game, which was, which was perfect. <laughs> uh, and then this year, actually, um, we got a spot downtown it's called the Blue Line. It's actually a hockey bar. Uh, the owner's a San Jose Sharks fan, so he's kind of familiar with the fan base and everything else like that. Like I said, it's you know perfect location right in the middle of the city. Uh, we're looking, we're pretty excited to to get this year going. Oh, that sounds cool. Um, you know, it, it's it's cool talking to all the different clubs from from around the country, and uh, you know, hopefully, you guys, you know, getting the word out because um, you know we we talk to people all the time that have no idea that these clubs even exist. You know, I mean, I meet Raiders fans all the time that they have no idea we're here. So hopefully, with this podcast, more people will will start learning about different different activities and events in their area. So on that note, man, what's the uh, I saw a flyer. You guys have some. You guys have a have a big bash coming up. Tell me about that. Yeah, so that's going to be our third annual picnic. Um, the first year we threw it out with like a month's notice, just try to get everybody together during the preseason. You know, expecting 30, 40 people, we had 100 people show up. Uh, last year we did it again, had about 200. This year we're expecting, you know, probably 250. Um, that's something that we, every time we get together, we try to do 
something for charity. So this time it's going to be a school supplies drive for the kids. Uh, we've done a bunch of stuff for, you know, turkey drives, toy drive, Christmas toy drives, uh, Easter basket drives. We try to do a bunch of stuff in the community every time we come together. Uh, just because we are in Kansas City, you know, you got all those Raider stereotypes to where we want that to, you know, to be that forefront to where, hey, you know, some Raider fans aren't that bad. You know, these guys are good. They actually do a lot for the community. So that's something we really, uh, you know, it's really important to us. Um, but like I said, back to this. So we got, you know, bounce house coming out for the kids. We got, uh, actually, it's a rival's barbecue. Uh, he's a member in our group to where he's throwing down on, uh, throwing down on the, on the grill and everything else like that. So he's going to be cooking out there all day. Um, like I said, it's going to be a pretty good turnout. I'm pretty pumped for it. Right on. And where, where is it located? Uh, this one's going to be at Longview Lake. Um, if they want to go to KC Raider Nation on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, um, like I said, the flyer and all the other information's up there. All right, awesome. That sounds cool, man. Yeah, I kind of actually wish I was closer because I'd definitely be down for that. That brings me to yeah, it's something we, we plan on every year. Um, and actually, in the off season, um, we teamed up with the nine one eight Raider Nation out of Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Northwest Arkansas, all, all kind of the Midwest clubs, and we had a another get together in branson missouri which is located towards you know southern missouri um and we all came together for that one so that's another thing that we do uh that we're looking to do annually and make this another pre- pretty big event because i think it's who's it hampton roads that has that east coast fan rally yeah out that way yeah yeah so basically you know we kind of seen that and say hey why can't we you know do that here in the midwest awesome yeah that, that brings me to something man you know we we've talked to you know, obviously, we're going to talk to mostly Raiders clubs on here, but we talked to the Dolphins Club in New York. We talked to the Chiefs Club in, in New York. And uh, next week, we're talking to a, a Cowgirls Club in New York. One thing that, that I find kind of, like, I don't find it interesting because it just goes, you know, goes with the territory. But none of these clubs, they don't do it like we do it. You ask them, like, what they do in the off season, and nothing. They don't do no. anything. They just... Uh, they get together for games, they hang out, and that's about it, man. Like, they're not – Raider Nation is like a family, you know? Yeah. We, we, any, any excuse we get to throw down and dress up in the silver and black, like, we're there. You know, yeah. if we can find a reason every weekend, we're going to get together. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know you know, we do it probably too much when, you know, we're, we run into the problems of our wives going, again? It's not, it's not even football <laughs> season. Again? What do you have to do now? Right. Yeah, you it, you know, it starts off, it's like 16 weeks, and then, and then, and then it turns into every weekend. Now we got something yeah, we, going we take down. Like a, but, we take like a week off here and there, you know. But, but it, it's a family event, man. The wives are cool now. Oh, like, yeah. They enjoy it. They, you, know, we, you know, we have kids that enjoy it. It's, it's cool, man. But nobody does it like Raiders do it, you know. I, I mean, you see Chiefs fans out there, like, you know, getting together and, and holding big events, or is it just their, their tailgates and the games, right? It's yeah, it's really just the tailgates and the games. And to be honest with you, I mean, I know there's a bunch of Chiefs fans, obviously, but there's no, not really a club or anything else like that out here. Um, to where, like I said, that's one thing that we do with the community. So when those Chiefs fans say, "Oh, Kansas City Raider Nation," you know, you know, they they kind of gawk at it, like, "All right, well, we're doing this, this, and that for the community. What are you doing?" And at that point, they're kind of, you know, they're stuck like Chuck and have nothing to say about it. So, like I said, that's one thing that we, you know, we kind of we love it. You know, like you said, you know, anytime we could throw that silver and black on, get a big crowd together, you know, it's a party for sure. Yeah, absolutely, man. And nobody, you know, I'm sure that I'm going to I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. I've never been to Arrowhead, but I guarantee that the Raiders tailgate is always going to be better than the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> yeah. tailgate, no matter uh, what. Yeah, I would, I, would, I would bet the ranch on that one, too. Yeah, I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll give it you guys. You do find your way coming out. We'll be in, lot in every year, the nation's lot. Uh, last year, I mean, it looked like you, you know, I talked to a couple people and said, man, I thought I was in Oakland, just the amount of silver and black through that parking lot. We shut that thing down. So, nice. Yeah, like I said, you guys are more than welcome to come out once you guys want to. Week 17, you know, who knows what could be on the line this year. If you guys find your way out this way, let us know. We'll take care of you. Yeah, man, we're always, we're always, you know, we go, we go through it trying to figure out which games we're going to try to make. Arrowhead's always been kind of uh, on the top of my list, though. Yeah, it's you know it's an important rival. You know, I'll give I'll give it to the the Kansas City fans. They you know at their tailgate they probably have better food, you know, with all the barbecue going. But yeah, I'm not going to speak for every Raider fan. I'm going to speak for most of our fans and our group here that we try not to bother too much with the whole food aspect of the tailgate. You know, less cooking, 
more, that means more, more, time, more time for drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Food is empty calories. Yeah, I mean, you got to tend to barbecue. You know, it's got to be cooked slowly over time. That's taken away a lot of, a lot of, a lot of important tailgating time. Well, I'm from California, so you know, I'm perfectly happy. To me. Perfect tailgate food is just a nice marinated carne asada. This guy's just going to say, give him some Mexican food yeah, and some tequila and he's good to go. A couple tortillas and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't need all that fancy stuff. But. <laughs> well, listen, you know, when you have your picnic there. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and then on top of that, uh, last year at the game, we actually did a, a cook-off between the Texas Raider Nation, Oklahoma Raider Nation, and us in Kansas City. And we actually came away with that one. So we had Kenny King out there with his barbecue sauce. Um, and we had a Kenny King, you know, barbecue, Kenny King cook-off for 2017. I think that's another thing that we're going to do annually is get him involved and kind of get the other uh, other clubs involved and kind of have a cook-off. So like I said, you know, that's, that's one thing that, you know, it's a good time. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that sounds cool, man. I mean, you guys are lucky because you get – you're guaranteed one game a year, you know. Like for us – you know, we we pretty much have to travel every year unless it's really rare that the Raiders yeah. are at MetLife. So, yeah. you know, but we uh, – so this year we're going to Baltimore and we were in Philly last year and uh, it's uh, it's cool, man. I envy the fact that you guys are – you guys get you guys get not only one game a year, but, year. I mean, a big one. Because yeah. the yeah. Raiders-Chiefs yep. is always a big game. Yep, no matter the score or no matter the records, you know, you always know that that game's going to come down the last two minutes within a touchdown and – you know, it's always a, a hard fought game for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, listen, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm not. I I am not Mr. Optimist. Anybody who knows me, especially when it comes to sports and the Raiders, but I'm telling you now that the balance of power is going to be shifting with our rivalry with the Chiefs here. Uh, you know, they they were up, they were on the swing for a while. It, it's turning now. Yeah, I'm with you. yeah. I don't think uh, Mahomes is going to do too good myself. No. I said he had a losing record in, in college against the top twenty five teams and the guy couldn't you know, yeah, he's got an arm, but you know, that don't mean nothing if he's throwing it, you know, fifteen yards out of bounds. Yeah, no. There's a lot of guys with arms. Ryan Leaf had a good arm too. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, my, you know, I made my prediction and the best part about that is if I'm wrong, I don't care. I don't care. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's that's perfect. You never claim to be a, a psychic or an expert, right? No, at anything. Right. At anything. But listen, you know, at, at your picnic, you know, you're doing, which is awesome, and you're doing your civic duty and your the charities, and that's great. Just remember, it, you know, obviously it's a great family atmosphere. At some point, there needs to be, I don't know, either a Kansas City chief flag burned, maybe a giant stuffed Kansas City football player type thing torn to shreds, preferably by young children. A to, pinata. Teaching them that right way. Yes, a pinata, if you will. Yep. That's actually what we got this year. We got a pinata set up for the kids, and he's uh, sporting that red and yellow. That's so those will be those, that video will be up here next week. You guys want to you guys want to get a whole Lord of the Flies thing going out in Kansas City in the parking lot? <laughs> kids stabbing things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nothing. Yes, yeah, beat beat the condiment monster. That's perfect. You gonna stuff it with ketchup and mustard packets, or is it gonna be candy in there for the kids? <laughs> All right, man. Can't well, you could do? Maybe you could stuff it with cans of toasted marshmallow. Is that it? Toasted yeah, marshmallow. Toasted beer? marshmallow <laughs> lager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't do that at the Raiders tailgates. No. no. The, the closest I come to that in real life is a Budweiser and a marshmallow on a stick. If I'm camping. Right. And there you go. Yeah, I don't even do that. <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> again, it's that whole less cooking, more drinking if you're camping time. But yep. That's a philosophy that holds true to most things. So one thing I always ask before we, uh, you know, before we wrap up these interviews is I like to get people to, you know, give, give their uh, message to Raider Nation, anything you want to say, anything you want to throw out there to the, to the rest of the nation, you know, lift their spirits up or, or, uh, you know, whatever. Free reign for you. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, I said, obviously, watching that game last night, I mean, I've seen quite a bit of recruitment. You know, Coach Gruden's going to be on everybody's ass, that's for sure. Um, I said, you know, the nation shows up deep everywhere. Like I said, tell them, tell them everybody come out to Kansas City Week 17. You know, we'll have it, we'll have it cracking for sure. Um, I said, the future is bright. I want to see them still get one more win, or one more Super Bowl in Oakland before they head off to Vegas and you know bring another one there, too. Absolutely, man. That's what we're all looking forward to. 
Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, you know, listen, I, I'm still. I know it's a it's a hard wish. I'm waiting on that upteenth hour where the angel of Oakland comes in and saves the team from actually moving to Las Vegas. But hey, who knows? Stranger things have happened. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> yeah. I don't even like to get into the debate. You know, I know. I, people look, we're all away fans. So I, I know it's very crushing for all my friends out in the in, in the East Bay and in California in general. So I like to stay out of it because it's not going to affect me the way that it affects them. So, uh, absolutely. Right. yeah, you know. I'll tell you what, what this thing is that being on the East Coast and even you, you know, being in, in Kansas City, it's pricey enough if you want to take the trip out to Oakland to catch a game there, the, you know, airfare and whatnot. Now, it's almost off the charts now in Vegas because, you know, that's going to be a, ga- a gambler's ticket kind of thing and good good luck trying to get tickets to a uh, Las Vegas Raiders game. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm a poker player, so I get free rooms at those hotels on the Strip. And uh, <laughs> I, get, I get comps, buddy, so <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, no, I know. I'm thinking you're going to have to lose a lot, though, to get the, that comp package with, to get the, the tickets to the game. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I don't gamble. I play poker. I'm good. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> All right. Tom, you got, you, got, you got anything, Tom, before we wrap this up? No, I ain't got anything, man. You guys are back covered it. It's the first time Tom said I ain't got anything. I ain't got anything, man. <laughs> but that's know, just you, for right now. You guys are just hitting it on the head. So, <laughs> All right, Eddie, man. It was good talking to you. And uh, this episode will be out uh, next Thursday. Uh, Wednesday at midnight, but you know Thursday morning when everybody's up, it'll be out. When once the season starts, I think our show's moving to Fridays. We'll send you the link and spread the word, brother. Yep, we'll do our part, get it out there to everybody. And I said, who knows which seventeen? Maybe get back in here and you know kind of hype that up. And you know, like I said, we'll see what the records go, and hopefully we'll be uh, already crowning that AFC West championship this year. Absolutely, man. Right. And, and speaking of week seventeen, we'll definitely hit you up before that. Because oh yeah. One thing we want to do is talk to the clubs in the in the away cities that the Raiders are playing in right before game time, so that we can you know pump everybody up for the tailgate and get everybody you know reminded that Raider Nation is there and they're there thick. So we'll hit you up definitely before that before that time comes. Sweet. Yeah, and hopefully if you know if we can ever figure out like technically what the hell we're doing here, you know, in a, the perfect uh, world here, we hit you up while you're at the tailgate of the game. Oh, that'd 17. be nice. Yeah. But that, that's, we're lucky we get like power going here. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's baby steps. But, but listen, before you go again, what's uh, your, your club name on Facebook? I, I want to hit you guys up. I want to just keep tabs on all our other Raider clubs around. Yep. It's KC Raider Nation. Again, that's across all platforms on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Um, like I said, if you guys want to follow along that, we'll have pictures and videos up from the picnic next Saturday. Uh, like I said, it's That'll be something great. Yep. Hoping for a good turnout. Awesome. Uh, I will definitely hit you guys up later on there. All right, man. All right. Thanks a lot, and uh, we'll 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 be talk. We'll be in touch. All right, brother. Take it easy. Take awesome. care, Eddie. Thank you. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. Hey, what's up? You're listening to the Fan Club Blitz with Splatterhead and Fitz, posted by the NJ Black Hole. We are here at the Irish Cottage in Hamburg, New Jersey. All right, man. That was fun talking to uh, Eddie from Kansas City. Yeah, yeah, that uh, very good. Good. His club sounds like it's really taken off there. Yeah, it sounds like they got a quite a foothold there in the middle of the country. Yeah, and it sounds like uh, not everybody in Kansas City drinks cucumber beer. No, I think they kind of shun that. That's what it sounded like, and, and with good reason. Listen, like like we said, if it's free, that's a whole different story. If you're buying it now, we're gonna have to sit down and talk. I wonder what Damien or Peter would say if I walked up there and asked him to throw a cucumber in my beer. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to be like, I don't know, we'd have to like check the diner and be like, hey, can we watch the Raider games here on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sound like they got a good thing going on out there in Kansas City, man. That's the stuff I like, man. Yeah. I dig that, man. Really, the direction this show is, man, is mainly Raider teams. But, man, if you're if you're uh, in a city and you are a supporter of a rival club and you're not just some guy hanging out going rah-rah for your team, but if you've planted your feet down and started a booster club. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm even excited about talking to the Cowgirls uh, club next week because, you know, they're right there in, in, in Giants hey. country, you know. Yeah. They got to deal with the same crap we do, man. 
Yeah. You know, like those guys in Kansas City, the Giants, you know, the Cowboys fans out here, they have it the same way, man. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, they're both, you know, terrible, both horrible teams. But, yeah. but the, there's rivals and then there's hated rivals, and that's hated rivals. Yeah. I mean, you know, Dallas and the Giants and then, uh, but yeah, yeah, Cowboys, Giants, you know, Raiders, Chiefs, doesn't get... Doesn't get much more heated than that. Nah, that's about it. Yeah, yeah you know, Jets, Dolph, Dolph fans or Dolphins, whatever right. you want to call them, Dolph fans. fans well, of, that's what the that's what they call the yeah, clubs. Yeah, fans of dolls. Yeah, I guess. Which, yeah, somebody has somebody has to love dolls. I don't know about you, but I, I think we're approaching what I can honestly say is my favorite time of the day. Oh, you're talking about the truth of Tom? Yes. What do you got for us? Well, what I got for everybody today, since we pretty much covered the state of the Raider Nation, what I have today is who bets on football? A lot of fits. You bet on football? Uh, for fun. For fun. Do you make crazy bets on football? You know, do you be like, you know, I'll, you know, I'll give you the points. I'll take the Packers on Monday against the Bears. Straight up bets, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, for, you know, for Skittles. Well, I got a play poker money. player. I don't gamble. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Chuck doesn't gamble. He just plays poker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, for you crazy bettors out there that like to throw money around on weird bets and long shots, um, I was arguing with a another fan of a another fan of a football team Wednesday night while we were playing horseshoes and drinking, and uh, we were arguing about what division in football has the most Super Bowl wins. And according to my math, it's the NFC East with thirteen. The closest one to them, I think, is the NFC West with seven. Maybe I think the, the AFC East might have seven too. So with thirteen wins out of what fifty Super Bowls. That means the NFC East has won the Super Bowl 25% of the time, almost. So if you are a betting man or woman or have disposable income you have no reason to have, go to Vegas. Throw some money down on one of those teams. You don't have to go to Vegas. We can bet in Jersey now. Oh, we could do sports betting in Vegas? You can do sports betting in New Jersey now. It's legal. Oh, yeah? I didn't know that. I didn't know that got passed. Just just started last. It started in March. Okay, well, that's great. So everybody follow my lead because I think I'm going to be like throwing Throwing some money down on one of those teams to uh, win the Super Bowl. Not, yeah, I'd like to see the Raiders, but, you know, 25% chance one of those teams is going to win. <laughs> so, probably not the Giants. Or, well, uh, anyway, that was the truth with Tom and the immortal words of Paul Bailoff. Kill posers. Until next week, kiddies. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Well, there you have it, kids. The Truth with Tom. He's teaching you how to place uh, sports bets. There you go. Yeah. That Truth with Tom segment. Now, any parents out there or aspiring parents, it's another reason to listen every week. Where else can you teach your kids how to gamble and bet on football? Here. It's all here. It's all here. Thank you, Tom. You can thank him now for the upbringing of your children. Right. We have everything here, really. You know, we breaking news. We broke the news about Tom Brady and women's underwear. Yes. Yeah, yes. And, and there's more to come here. You heard it here first. And, uh, you know, we bring you good interviews with fan clubs, booster clubs, black hole chapters, you know. And, uh, and then we have the truth with Tom, which is always, you know, should be uh, life lessons for all. Yes. If there was only, only some type of segment that we could have that we could just give you what's on our minds. Well, you know, I think what we're going to do right now is we're going to go right off the rails. There we go. Okay. Why don't you get it started here, Fitz? I think I will. Now, listen. Okay, I was driving the other day. Nice country roads up here. You know, I was going out towards Blairstown. Old old style houses. Nice, beautiful day. And what do I see? Like, I don't know, 50 to 100 people on bicycles fine it was it was a beautiful summer morning you know they're out getting some exercise it, i was looking there was no numbers on their back no race it was just a group of people out riding their bikes together not a problem that was a guy from the chromags <laughs> 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 yeah 
what I, what I have the pro what my problem is is all right you're out riding your bike great you have to dress up in your full outfit you know you got your helmet which all right by law whatever blah 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 safety but you have your spandex clothes on like you're like you're actually in a race what, what are you doing like listen there, there's guys you, you know guys that compete in like Olympic lifting and powerlifting, you know, they have to wear those little tight singlet things. Right, well, you have to. Yeah, but you don't see him working out at the gym wearing them. Like, why are you wearing your full dopey, skin-tight, short, bright-colored outfit riding on a country road during the day? I don't know. It makes you go faster? I I don't know. That seems to be the excuse for everything. Yes. That's why they shave their legs. Yes. go faster. So I guess next time, like, if I'm hanging out in my mother-in-law's pool, like, maybe I should just shave off all my body hair so I can swim faster. Okay, then. incredibly disturbing. (laughs) It's no worse than Tom wearing women's underwear. (laughs) On his head. (laughs) On my head. It's it's definitely not worse than we wear me wearing women's underwear on my head. That's far worse than me wearing women's underwear. On my head. I don't I don't I don't think Liam wants to see that either. Yeah, I don't he, think he, your son wants to see a dad. flop flopping around in the pool like Greg Leganis <laughs> with no body hair <laughs> at your mother-in-law's house. <laughs> You're not going to get invited back for Thanksgiving. Well, you know what? The bottom line is that I don't waist deep is as far as I go in because other than that, then you start getting pool water in your beer can. You're not going to sh- you're not going to shave in the pool, right? Like that lady on you. That <laughs> lady might, on that YouTube. Was that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might. Well, you know what? I never thought about it until now. She's sitting there on the edge of the pool, shaving her legs. Uh, yeah, that's... Kids swimming around. That's why you don't go to hotels in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to anybody that actually lives in Alabama. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm almost positive that nobody in Alabama is listening to us right now. You know what? What you're talking about it brings me to, to something that I've always wondered uh, since we're off the rails here. We live... You know, people outside of listening to the podcast that aren't from New Jersey probably have a different idea of where we are. You know, they probably think we're in like some metropolitan like no. uh No, we're out here in the sticks. Yeah. Yeah, New Jersey's a big state. We got cities, we got farms, we got uh uh where we live a lot of the residents think that they are in Alabama. Yes. Got, there's, yeah, uh, there's, there's, there's cars in the yard that have not seen the light of day in 30 yeah, years. There's big rebel flags yeah. flying. There's, uh, they, some of them even talk with a southern accent yep. for some strange reason. Yeah, Ogdensburg, for some reason, is part of Mississippi. I mean, yeah, oh, it still is. still trying to figure that yeah, out. I just recently <laughs> moved to Ogdensburg, yeah. and, and then, I can attest to that fact. And then there's, uh, <laughs> there's a really cool place. That whenever somebody from out of town comes, I like to, if it's a hot day out, and it's like you know dusk. I like to drive them uh, and take a little little slow drive down Main Street in Franklin. And just <laughs> just kind of just kind of watch, you know. And they, the look that that I get on, on from my friends are like, "Where are you taking me? What is this? There's zombies out there, <laughs> yeah, man." Yeah, exactly. And they sit outside because they they don't have air conditioners nope. and they they got lawn chairs out in yeah. front of those you shanty b- bug screens on the doors. <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's yeah. frightening. Yeah, <laughs> yes. it's cool stuff. And then there's Sussex Borough. That's always fun. I was just going to tell you, you know what? I live in Wantage right outside of Sussex Borough. And, you know, you, when we venture into town, if you want to call it town, it, Sussex in and get something to eat or taco to town. Two great places, by the way. In, yeah, in, yeah, in the yeah. Area. yeah. There's nothing quite like the whole little outside <coughs> area of Sussex Borough where all the – basically the people who live above the Fountain Square in just – hang out and it's um it's it's interesting it's almost like somebody was doing like a like a like a documentary on meth addicts or something like that you right know, it's it's very interesting you remember when they started up the guardian angels yeah all three yeah, <laughs> that that was, all, all three guys with <laughs> yeah walk, walking the streets of sussex borough <laughs> i believe my my niece got yelled at by one of them because she dumped popcorn on the ground oh which, which is probably about, you know, that's a, about the extent of what they're going to have to encounter in the, 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 the hard streets of Sussex Borough. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the rough and tumble the world <laughs> rough of banjo picking. Yeah. The ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> you deep in the hood. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's something to behold. 
this is really off the rails because I'm going back and forth. See, I was going one way, and then we ended up over there. That's, but, what, uh, that's, what, that's what makes off the rails off the a rails. wonderful thing. So you're talking about the bicycle guys, right? Right. Now, you know, I grew up in California, and I spent a lot of time in Seattle. You know, people hunted. But I didn't live in a in an area like this where hunting was like a you know a pastime you know it right. was, it's where it's a really big thing, so I wasn't familiar with a lot of the customs and traditions and uh, <laughs> and I see these guys that during hunting season and they get all dressed up in camouflage, mm-hmm. I, you know I don't know what a deer's vision is like I don't know if you you know but but I can understand the concept of I want to look like a tree. <laughs> so, so, so I don't, you know, so that I can hide and blend in with nature, right? And then I can shoot Bambi. And I, that's, I understand it. But then, so they're all dressed up in camouflage, and then they throw this giant orange vest right over the top. <laughs> which I also, I, under, I understand the concept. That's so that you're, you're, you know, you're idiot. A hunter that is over on the other <laughs> side doesn't shoot you. That's exactly right. right. Yes. But my thought is, if you're going to wear the orange, then why wear the camouflage? Just dress up in orange. Yes. What's the point? It, it lay down in a pumpkin field. Right. <laughs> I'm totally confused. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I and I get your confusion, and it's more of these. And I used to hunt, and I haven't in years. But it's more of these guys that just like to walk around and camp. Because now you're walking in camouflage, people are like, oh, hey, you hunt. Listen, you're you're in a tree stand, up above the ground. You have a gun. It's different if you're bow hunting. You know that that's different. You're closer. You have to wait for them to get in closer. So you have to, and you don't have to wear the orange during bow season. But gun season. Why don't you have to wear the orange? Because it's. I guess there's less people who shot with arrows than guns. Oh. There's I actually, would say, a, there are actually, to me, be the, why would you <laughs> shoot? Well, the problem is, the, the actual thing is. Well, is, the one thing is, with bow hunting, you got one shot, so you're going to make sure you see what you're shooting at. Oh, okay. Whereas you get the yahoos with the shotguns, they hear a rustle in the bushes, they just start blasting yeah. off 12 gauge. Oh, so it's not that they turn around and they see you and they go, is that a deer? No. And, oh, they no, just... They, they just, just, just boom, 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 boom. And, and right, there, yeah. there are a lot less people in the woods during bow season. Yes. Okay. But but you're right, though. You're you're in a tree stand. You're taking a shot at a deer with a shotgun out. Some, you know, with some of these barrels, you can, you're talking 100-yard shots, 50, 75-yard shots, 125-yard shots. You could you could wear a pinstripe polka dot suit if you want. You're shooting from that far away, but it, it it doesn't mean it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right. And do you have to wear camouflage when you go fishing? Because I see them doing that too. I know. do all the time. Well, you 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 do. Yes. When I when I'm up in the mountains fishing, always have camouflage on. And that's not that's strictly because so I don't want other fishermen to see me. Oh. Especially if I find a good place where there's a lot of trout flopping well, that, around. I don't want anybody else to see me. See, there's a logic behind yeah, that. Yes, so I can creep along the bank and they won't see me. And you don't have to wear orange because they're not going to confuse no. you for a fish. No. No. I actually, you know, because Tom does do some surf fishing. Tom uh, could be confused for a bear, though. Yeah, He's he a could. big fella. I, I, <laughs> I, I want Tom to actually start. When, I, dr- when I'm surf fishing, I'm dressed like Jeff Spicoli. Yeah, well, I, no, I want yeah. you. I want you to dress as a giant sand dune. Just no. so, I mean, let's adapt now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I don't know if you remember, but there was a few years back, and it was here locally. But uh, so, I, you know, I'm not a hunter. I've never been hunting. I don't, you know, I don't know anything about it. But I, I, I get that there's like this process, right? You got to get a license or a permit. Yes. And then you, 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 you got to get the camouflage, and then you got to get the orange to go yes. over the camouflage, <laughs> and then you got to have the right weapon at the right time. I guess it's not really a weapon; it's a tool. Yes. If you're hunting. Yes. Right. But you got to have the right equipment at the right time. You can't go out and shoot. You know, during bow season, you can't take a, you know, AR-15 out there, and no. you know. Which you wouldn't want anyway. No, you don't want it. To. You don't want no. an AR-15 to shoot a deer. No. But, uh, and then there's like, you know, what is it, muzzle loaders? Yeah. There's yes. all different stuff, right? Yeah, but e- e- yeah. either way, you, you you shoot the deer, and then what do you, you have to take the deer back to report it somewhere? Yeah, to like, they use, they have like check stations. Okay. And you're issued tags, however many, depending on the zone. 
So right. there's different zones you hunt in. You might get two tags for one, you know, a couple of doe tags for this one, you yeah. know. So you have to have that and bring them and check them in. And then it's so if, if you if you come back with a buck and you're only supposed to have a doe, that's yeah, a problem. Yeah, it'd be a problem if you went to the check-in station. Yeah. So a couple, <laughs> couple, you know, maybe like a couple years back. Yeah, you, the time flies. It's probably going back like 14, 15 years. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember, but it, so the guy went out hunting, had a you know deer. Permit. I know exactly where you're going with and this. And he, uh, <laughs> he comes back to the, the checkpoint. It's all excited. And they come out to check or whatever they do. That's what they come out to the truck. Yeah, they, they, yeah they, they want to get a weight on it and stuff and take your info off from your tag. So this guy had a goat. <laughs> <laughs> he shot a goat. <laughs> and you remember this story? I do. <laughs> I do. There's actually one better. And this is going back a little bit longer than that. And I believe the gentleman was, um, I, I want to say from Brooklyn. He got a New Jersey license, and he was in line waiting to check his deer until he got to the checking point, and they informed him that, yes, he shot a wonderful cow. <laughs> 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 yeah. To, to his credit, it wasn't a you know a, a black and white cow. It was a, a tan cow. So it I mean, was fawn I color. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't know if it was a, a cow wearing deer camouflage. I don't know. Like, but it was. You I, know. I, I swear, Johnny, there was like thirty of them just standing there in the field. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't move, so I shot one. <laughs> I, yeah. I had heard of the goat one. I hadn't heard of the cow one. Yeah, 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 that no. cow one, that was probably maybe a good 20-something years ago. We might need a uh, higher standards for the permit issue. Yeah. <laughs> you to, you it's like evaluation. Just, you, know, you know, just show a picture of different animals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, is this one a deer? No. 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 <laughs> like, or- even th- point to the deer. Yeah. If he points to a cow, you don't get a permit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we could even do the you know the little the little game. You t- like you, you, as it spins around, it says the cow says. Yeah, you know. It's it's what does a deer say? I don't know. They they like shoot me. They they make they like whine or something. They like make the same noise as a giraffe. Nobody knows. Up here, a deer says, "Don't shoot me." Yeah, don't shoot me, please. Or certain parts of Sussex County. See, deer hunting works well for me because I surf fish, like fish, like Fitz said. So, you know, I trade a lot of fluke and striped bass and bluefish for venison. So, you know, works well with me because you know the rednecks they don't get out of here. They don't want to have anything to do with the ocean you know no. you know so. how far are we from new york city i work there i should i should uh, oh what 40 miles, miles yeah 40 it's, miles right it takes me about an hour an hour without traffic right hour plus. With, with my commute door to door from my house it's about an hour and a half two hours but you if you're driving in no traffic you make it to the city in about an hour yeah um and yeah, it's really not that far. No. Right? Like I said, I grew up in California, right? Not far from San Francisco. I mean, you know, an hour and a half, you know, a couple hours maybe. I had never met anyone in my life in California where I live who had never been to San Francisco. I don't know how many people I've met in New Jersey in this area that have never been to Manhattan. <laughs> like, they're like, I never been. <laughs> Why? <laughs> really? It's like, crazy. I never had a reason to go. Like, how about it's the center of the universe yeah, and exactly. it's right next to you? you I know, mean, you just go, every, go Everyone from up here that I've ever met that said that they all get to say, I never had a reason to go there. Right. I mean, it's New York. Yes. It's, it's, it, people save their money their whole lives just to spend a week there. Yeah. Like to take a vacation. And, and they missed out on the heyday. Yes. But still, go. Look at look up at the big buildings like the rest of the tourists. Yeah. And, you know, it's cool. Check it out. Yeah. They think they're going to get mugged or something as soon as they get yeah, that's, out of the that's tunnel. that's what they think. It's still, it's still uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's the, it's the greatest city in the world. I'm yeah. not, I'm, you know, I'm not a big city person, but... It is what it is. Yeah, it is nothing like New York. No. You know, there's but, nothing like no. Brooklyn. There's nothing like Manhattan. There's no, nothing, I mean, like, definitely nothing yeah. like Staten Island. <laughs> See, up, up, up where we live, there's a lot of people up here that really have not left Sussex County, this corner of our state. Yeah. Now, I know people up here, they go on vacation every year. They hook up their, you know, fifth wheel Winnebago and they drive it 
10 miles up the road and they park it there and that's where they vacation <laughs> 10 miles from their house yeah. and they run home the wife runs home does laundry goes back that's not a vacation you're at your neighbor's house yeah. and right. you brought and you brought your your shed with you <laughs> that's 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 what that is that, it, this is totally unique to me yes. i mean uh, growing up in california they, there was I, I mean you couldn't find a person that lived in salinas right which is where i'm from that had never been to San Francisco yeah. or San Jose or, or even L.A. I mean, most people had, yes. you know, which is a good five, six hour drive. Yes. But, well, not three hours the way I drove it, but, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a, little good, a little of that, you know, good California green and you just get in the car and <laughs> whoo, that's it. You're off. Crank up the prong. <laughs> we <were It's>, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, though, where else could you go? You know, it, it, you go to New York City. Where else can you find a place where you can find, outside of, first of all, about 8,000 amazing Irish pubs, restaurants, whatever. But you can, right down the street, you find, you can, you can get barbecue. You can go to an Ethiopian restaurant. You can go to a Norwegian restaurant. I mean, any, it's, it's all right there. It's amazing. Yeah. You can go to a Raiders bar, a Chiefs bar. You can go to bar, a Raiders bar, a Chiefs bar, a Dolphins, Dolphins bar, bar, a Cowboys, Cowboys bar. Yeah. It's amazing, and, and you get any kind of food you want. Yeah, it, it's it's staggering, and you know, like Tom said, yeah, these guys hook up their sheds and go ten miles down the road. Some of them do get crazy. They they might go to the Delaware, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which which is twenty miles <laughs> down the road. And I've known one or two that'll go all the way out to like Knobles, which oh, okay. is a campground amusement park, and but that's about it's an hour plus into Pennsylvania, but it's. Listen, it's not going. But it doesn't look any different than here. No, no, it's not it, it, going to the beach. It's not going to the city. It's going from this to it looks like this, except it's about an hour away. Yeah, people. Yes. Listen, <laughs> get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, expand yourself. You know what? Try to surf fish. Head into the city like and don't stay away from Times Square. <laughs> yeah, it's don't useless. Go, yeah, don't go there anymore. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere above 14th Street, yes. as a matter of fact. Yeah. And, it, and and check out the outer boroughs, too. Yeah. You know, go to Brooklyn. Not, you know, not maybe not so much anymore, but Brooklyn yeah. used to have some character. Yeah. You know, yeah. go to Staten Island. Go over to Shaolin. Hang out with the Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah. A, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Staten Island. Then you could see, you could go to Staten Island and meet all the fans that start all the problems at Mets and Jets games. That's right. All right there. <laughs> hey, but we got we got a great black hole chapter there, which we, we that's it. Yeah, we, we we still have to get on the phone. We were supposed to do that interview a few weeks ago, and uh, that's when my father in law ended up back in the hospital. So we had to we had to reschedule, and we haven't been able to. All right, man. We really went off the rails, but yeah. uh, hope you enjoyed it. Now at least we have a title for this segment. So when you get to that part, if you don't want to hear us talk about <laughs> cheeseburgers, you can just you can I, hit the stop button. Listen, we could talk about wings if you want, or, or we could, we could talk about anything. But uh, you know, I mean, we gave everybody pretty much out in the world a good a, a good encyclopedia encyclopedia lesson about you know Northwest New Jersey. Yeah. So and I, I'm thinking maybe you know isn't DJ Mike Scott down by Philly with those guys. Yeah, he's in Philly. Maybe got a couple of those guys that are familiar with the Pine Barrens, the other Ooh. section of our beautiful state right. that is quite Alabama-ish. He's that got some. Special. He's got some Jersey guys in his okay. club, actually. Right. That, uh, Maybe we can get them on here to uh, talk about talk the, about the Pine Barrens. Yeah, talk Listen. about the Pineys. Teach us about the Jersey Devil. <laughs> you want you want to talk about you want to talk about Pineys. Are Sussex residents or like city slickers to those dudes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, they're they're like they're wearing like zoot suits and big chains swinging around to, to those yeah. pineys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I go down to Atlantic City to play uh, cards, uh, I just go right through there on the parkway. I don't stop. I don't. No. I don't get off. I don't. No. I don't go wandering through no. the Pine Barrens at no. all. No, that would be deliverance too. It is that. Yeah. It, you I kayak some of those rivers and streams back there, and that's all you hear is banjos. Yeah. Right? The only reason I could think of going down there. <laughs> only reason I could think of going down there is if I had a body to get rid of. But you know what? I got the. I got. I got. You know, Edison yeah. that cuts through uh, yeah. Jefferson and Ogdensburg. Yep. I can get rid of one up there if yep. I need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're, we got that. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I got my own woods. I don't have to go to the Pine Barrens. You know, before we before we go completely off the rails, which I think we have, <laughs> I, I should say before we end the rails, 
before we get back on the tracks. No, not, there's there's <laughs> no get, there's, no, there's no getting once back. Once we go track. off the rails, you got once we go off the rails, you got to wait till next week for us <laughs> to get back on track. And let's face it, people, uh, you you don't want to hear three almost probably clinically brain damaged people trying to tell you about football because what do we know? We, we don't we don't know anything more than you do. We're just guesstimating. Yeah, look, we're just football fans. Yeah. You're not right. even. Look, Raiders fans are not football fans. No, because we don't like anything else but the Raiders. That's it. All I, I don't care about football. Yeah. All your teams suck. They're garbage. <laughs> the Raiders are the only team I care about, and that's it. And, and I think all Raiders fans are like that. That's the way it should be. That's you know? the way I was raised. Yeah. You'll meet other fans of other teams that will tell you, like, oh, the Raiders are my second favorite team. I don't I don't even – I don't comprehend that. I don't know what a second favorite team is. <laughs> it's uh, it's ridiculous. And, and let's face it. You're, you're not tuning in for that with us anyway. You want to hear the truth with Tom. You want to hear us talk about – Taylor ham, egg and cheese. You want to know how to order a breakfast sandwich and, in Jersey? That's right. And New Jersey rednecks and little Mississippi up in New Jersey. That, that's what you want. Goat eat. hunting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Killing cows for, come on, for deer meat. But, uh, you know, I was just actually, I was thinking last night as uh, I was watching the Raider game and um, sending social media messages back with my co host here about, you know, because obviously, like the first scrimmage of the year is going to like just dictate the entire season and by the way i'm thinking you know after his performance last night they should just bench car and cook should be the quarterback of the future <laughs> I, I, you know, hey, trade car we don't need it yeah, yeah trade shirt all the time yeah we should tr- actually trade car and um khalil yeah and let's see yeah you know, like, i don't like a like a six round draft pick or something we, we should do good we have cook yeah we're good it's fine. But as I was thinking, because I always have to have my background music playing as I'm, you know, because I'm not, I don't need to hear the commentary of the game because they're, they're bigger idiots than we are. And that's, that's a stretch. Right. So it, it popped into my head, you know, I'm listening to, you know, we all have the three of us here all have sim- very similar music tastes, almost identical. We're also off the rails with what we listen to. Yes. We're all over yes. the place. Yes. So I thought it might be a good idea, and, you know, the other guys can jump in too, but I, I, I want to do it every week, at least myself. I, I want to just throw out each week a band, an album, a song, something that deserves mentioning that maybe you've never heard of or maybe you have heard of but never listened to, or maybe it's something you knew well but you haven't listened to in a while that just deserves repeating and something, it sounds just like something fun. to bring it up. All right. And I'm going to start off this very first segment with a band that I does not get to, to do that it should because they're overshadowed by their their older more successful brother and that is uh, Australia's own Tattoo Rose. Rose Absolutely. Tattoo. Rose Tattoo. Exactly. I did that on purpose because uh, my wife's friend she's a runner. She knows through the whole running thing. She's from Australia and she was up in the city and we kept talking about music and I kept purposely saying Tattoo Rose, and she kept having to get mad and like correcting me. So now I always have to refer to them as Tattoo Rose. All right, all right. <laughs> but you know, it is Rose Tattoo. If you've never heard them, listen to them. They're awesome. I mean, if you like ACDC, you're gonna like Rose Tattoo. They're, that's the older brother, you know. It, but they're they're just they're cool. They deserve to do. They're an awesome band. Great music. But ang- I mean, what an angry lead singer who's what three foot tall. Yeah. I mean, like some of you guys may have heard a song called uh, Nice Boys Don't Play Rock and Roll, and you probably heard Guns N' Roses play it, but that's a Rose Tattoo song. Yeah. It's a classic. I think they're playing Walkin' next year, too. Yeah? Oh, yeah. No, that, that's that's also on my bucket list, Walkin'. Okay. I'm going to wait for Tom to break me out of the nursing home when he goes. <laughs> yeah. <does it. laughs> yeah. That was a good story. Yes. All right, Tom, you're next. Um. Well, the second week in a row, I had a breakfast problem. Um, our local grocery store, ShopRite, it's got bacon on sale, right? You know, I normally don't buy supermarket bacon. You know, I buy bacon from, you know, the local farmers, you know, support them. Not to mention that, you know, it tastes 10,000 times better than, it, packing. than any kind of industrial bacon you would buy. Well, but I was in there. I needed bacon. I was making bacon cheeseburgers. I was like, okay, three ninety nine. Let me pick up a pound of this bacon, and it was Shoprite bacon. Now it's probably the same bacon you get in Piggly Wiggly, whatever Kroger's, whatever across the United States. Probably same crap, all from the same feedlot in Kansas City. <laughs> but uh, 
But <laughs> this was the most disgusting, bland bacon I've ever had in my time. I don't know how you could screw up bacon. It's bacon. You cut it out of the pig and you smoke it. They screwed it up somehow. It, it was like late night talk show. It was as bland as Colbert, and when I opened the package, I thought freaking Kimmel was going to start crying. <laughs> this was horrible. You know, and, you know, I did what I could to make the sandwich at my house. You know, I put cheddar on it. You know, I had some jalapenos. I, I, I even had to salt the bacon, for Christ's sakes. You, you never have to salt bacon. And it was just horrible. Do not buy industrial bacon. Oh, buy mom and pop bacon, local farms. They'll appreciate it. Spend your hard-earned money on good crap. Don't waste your money. It's horrible. You know, I mean, that's you know, two weeks in a row, my breakfast was ruined. <laughs> I ate by an incompetent boob and now by bad bacon, which I never thought I'd ever hear. Bad bacon. But there is bad bacon. I have discovered it. And is that the name of a band? Because that's, that's what we were asking you. It should be. <laughs> if, if there was a band. Oh, okay. I, you were asking me about a band. Okay. I didn't know. I'll tell you I what, know. though. Hey, any, any aspiring musicians out there, if you're looking for a name of a band, <laughs> bad, bad bacon. bacon might be it. I, I had no idea we were talking about the band. I thought that was Fitz's deal. <laughs> we're going around. No, I. Your I, turn. You know, um, I don't know. A band I've been listening to lately was uh, uh, it's a band from Michigan called Against the Grain. All right. Um, you know, pretty straightforward, heavy duty, snotty punk rock and roll. You know, give them a listen. Great band. Seen them open for the Meat Men down the shore. Um, you won't be disappointed. Awesome. Bad bacon sucks. <laughs> Bad bacon sucks. <laughs> that that is. A, you know what? That, that's a great name for a band. You know what? When we do our, um, it's like a band our, of our like half-ass a, misfits cover Raider band. Uh, that, that might be the name. That should be a band of like. The punk rock cops. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> bad bacon. Bad bacon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, look, I'm going to go because I, I can't talk enough about this band because they've been overlooked. They've been overlooked by you know, and overshadowed by another band who basically is, in my opinion, cosplaying these guys. Um, and that band is Beowulf from Venice, California. All right. So check them out. You may have overlooked them. You may not have, have, have heard them. But if you want to hear some good crossover, you know, you can't really label these because they're all over the place musically. You can always tell it's Beowulf, but, it, you know, they could be coming at you with some hardcore. They could be coming at you with some metal. They'd be coming at you with a ballad kind of thing. They're just a great band. Beowulf, good, good record. Yeah, I'm going to go with Jesus Freak, which is, uh, you know, hey, Dale's a, he's a gangster. He's a, uh, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a Venice OG, you know, Beowulf boy, BWF, BYZ from Venice. He's also a Jesus freak, but he wears his heart on his sleeve, man. You want to know about Dale from Beowulf? You just listen to his records and he's going to tell you. And he's going to sing about, you know, rucking it up, getting into scraps. He's going to tell you he likes Jesus. So good album. Yep. A great, great, great band. And you know what? There is one. You can label them, label them awesome because they're an awesome band. All right, folks. We went off the rails. <laughs> this is Spiderhead. This is Fitz. And Tom. And you've been listening to the Fan Club Blitz. Stand by, because next week's episode, I, I'm predicting, is going to be about five and a half hours. That's right. <laughs> miniseries. We're gonna, we should just do a miniseries. Yeah. Do a marathon. Yeah. We're getting Guinness Book of World Records. What's the oh, longest oh, podcast? That, we could do that. <laughs> oh, we could do that. <laughs> just, just sit here forever. <laughs> we could have... We, we could have at least farm, none of, farm bacon and and striper and venison and just just <laughs> at least none of this stuff is battery operated. That's a- <laughs> so okay, some upcoming things though. As we end this show, I will get back on track a little bit here. New Jersey chapter of the Black Hole. Last year we spent a lot of time planning out our inaugural Labor Day party. This year that would make it our annual Labor Day party. We've spent zero time planning it at all, but we're going to have one yeah. at the Irish Cottage Inn. Um, so if you're in New Jersey, if you want to come to New Jersey, we're going to have a party on the Sunday before Labor Day right here at the Irish Cottage, Route 23, Hamburg, New Jersey, bordering Franklin. What are you put, put either one in your GPS, you'll find it. And so we got that coming up. Um, and then the season is upon us, so we're going to be here every week uh, packing this place in with Raider fans. Yep. 
watching uh, watching our Raiders, you know, the return to excellence. Hopefully. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for. That's what that's what we're all looking for. You know, I think yeah. so. Or at least the return to 500, <laughs> which is would be nice. Yeah, which is excellent <laughs> compared to last year. Yes. But you know, like uh, like Chuck just said about the Labor Day party, and it, it is a good time. And you know, our regulars that go, you know, anybody else that's listening that's in the area, come out. It, it's a good time. You know, last year we were able to get a what was it the uh, the Vikings Raiders Super Bowl game that we watched. Right, and this year I'd like to watch the. Uh, the Eagles game. I was going to say, in honor of the Eagles finally winning a Super Bowl, let's watch a, a game of them losing the Super right. Bowl. And we're going to have raffles and 50-50s and, and food and drink. We're going to get drunk and be stupid. It's yep. going to be great. It's gonna be like it's gonna be like you're coming to our podcast in person. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, some other things we have coming on uh, here coming up shortly. Uh, we've been invited to do a roundtable which is a, a joint podcast with the Raiders, Raiders Fan Radio, right. Murph's Fan Cave family. So it'll be, you know, the guys from Raiders Fan Radio, including Sonny, who's kind of left the show because he's busy, but, you know, he's in and out, and Murph, and then Mikey from Mikey and Murph, yeah, um, and then the three of us knuckleheads. And, and, All right. what's, and what's going to be great is uh, make sure you people listen to it because I'm almost positive after this first time, Murph's going to say, this is never happening again. <laughs> <laughs> He's already agreed to doing it at the close of the season. So we're going to do okay. one. That, <laughs> right. So we got two. That, look, no, it, it, it'll, it'll be good. And I think he'll, he'll rain. He, look, I told him that I'll try and, uh, I'll try and control Fitz's potty mouth. <laughs> yeah, and, that's tough. But Mikey is all him. Because he's got to control that guy. So if he can rein Mikey in, I think we can keep it. We can keep it under control. We can keep it to about an hour. Yeah. And uh, I'm working on it, Murph. I, I said f you today. I didn't even say the whole word. Right. Yeah. We're working on it, and you know I appreciate it because usually I have the biggest potty mouth of the whole yes. crew. But on the podcast, I'm like, okay, I'm, I've got to control myself, and it takes a lot for it, me to go in and listen to these things as I'm editing and then <laughs> hit that stupid horn noise. Which I gotta it's say, funny. My, my wife cracks up every time she hears it. Yeah, it's funny. The horn is great. Now, I'm not giving up any secrets. Um, but we have that going on, and then uh, also... I have uh, I've got an interview scheduled for that Labor Day weekend. A guy from California that has a uh, a club out there with members that support multiple teams, right? And he's got a a, a very exclusive, secretive Facebook group that uh, is uh, it's I can't even say the name of it That's because it's, <laughs> it's very secretive. Secret handshakes and funny hats. Yeah, but it's brutal. I mean, it's brutal. It's just people going at each other for their football teams. and So he's going to be coming on. He also, I don't know if he's just trolling everybody on Facebook, because this is a new thing he started doing, is throwing out all these wacky conspiracy theories. And I'm like, you're, you're just messing with everybody. And he's like, no, no, no. So I'm going to get him on the show. And I told him at the, the, you know, right before we go off the rails, I'm going to hit him up on some of these conspiracy theories and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll go back and forth on that. So another guy who's big on these conspiracy theories is Mikey from uh, Mondays with Mikey and right. Murph. So I reached out to Mikey and asked him if he wanted to be on that too. So he said, absolutely. Oh, that's as long as it's a Saturday and not a Sunday. I said, okay, so I'll reach out to... I thought we could do it on the same day as the party, but that's all right. We can do it that Saturday. Nah. We'll get uh, we'll get Jeff Salgado from... from uh, you know that club that can't be named, right? <laughs> and we'll uh, and we'll get Mikey on, and uh, we'll let these two wing nuts tell us all their conspiracy theories. <laughs> we'll learn about, you know, chemtrails and uh, that maybe the Earth is flat. Who knows? Who knows where they're gonna go? FEMA camps and all that stuff. <laughs> and maybe John Joseph will call it. Yeah, oh. maybe we get John Joseph on here. He can. Oh, that's that, that's just too much right now. Yeah. So, so that's coming up. And uh, other than that, man, uh, I think this has been a show. That's that's a wrap. Yeah, just, and, uh, just one update, though, really quick with our, our black hole group in New Jersey here. We're looking for people to get certified CPR. And if you already are certified CPR, can you make sure your CPR is updated. Just It's just in the event of any kind of Chris Potts incident during the season. <laughs> yeah. We need somebody on hand. <laughs> and if anybody's willing to uh, donate a ED machine, you know, which... Chris Potts is one of great. our one of our original members here, and he has a meltdown yeah, every football yeah. game. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which we're trying to make a segment. He's going to have a heart the attack. Pots meltdown someday. on the show, but we're we're that's still we're still working on it. Yeah. That. Yeah. Hey Pots, if you're listening, you got to call in yeah, and we, give us your meltdown. Yes. I'm sure when the season starts, yeah. you're going to have plenty of meltdowns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even when we're winning, he has a almost has a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, he's got it's you know that that whole that second and ten, and now all of a sudden it's like third and three, and there's a meltdown because we couldn't get that extra three yards. Yeah, it's uh, we get it. It's okay. It's okay, Chris. We're here for you. All right, guys. Well, according to the thing I'm reading here, part two <laughs> of this episode. <laughs> Uh, we're at about 49 minutes. That's since the interview. So <laughs> I think awesome. we're think we're going to wrap it up because yeah. I don't know who's going to listen to us for that long. Yeah, I, I don't know. Although, I'm not, I would listen. This I is, would, too. This is entertaining crap. I would, too. How could you not? Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, Raiders on three. One, two, three. Raiders! Raiders. All right, uh, this is Tom. I guess uh, we're going to be wrapping up our show here. Um, if you have any questions for me or you want to call in and uh, talk about anything you want on uh, the Raider Fan Club Blitz, um, our number is 732-798-0257. Feel free. Ask me about Mr. Skittles. I love Mr. Skittles. Um, we're also going to give a shout out to the Irish Cottage, uh, our home base. They are located at 602 Route 23 North in Franklin, New Jersey. And their number is 973-827-2090. And uh, give us a call. Let us know what you think. Questions, comments, anything you want to say. Feel free. Talk to you next week. Bye. Good. Good. Oh, Perfect. I got it.